Hey YouTube, what's up? Welcome to another new video where today we're going to be talking about four basic things that you're supposed to do as a retoucher before you begin to retouch your photos in Photoshop. So I've noticed that many people do not um, process their images very well before they begin to retouch. They just go ahead and start retouching immediately. They have their pictures uploaded on Photoshop. <laughs> Um, this is the image I'm going to be working on today. It's an image of my very beautiful model, Stephanie. I'm going to leave the link to her Instagram handle in the description below so you guys can go and support her after watching this video. So now, um, the first thing to do before you begin to do that should always be color correction. Try as much as possible to get your image looking as natural as possible before you begin to retouch. Now let's take this image for example. Um, it looks a bit too warm, which is not very natural. So what I'm going to do is I'll just go to camera roll and I'll make a little adjustment to get the skin looking natural. So I'll just go to my filter. Then I'll go to camera roll. Now in camera roll, all what I have to do is just uh, play around with my color temperature. I don't really have to do much. The aim is to make to reduce the warmth in the picture. So I just move my slide to the left a bit until the warmth is reduced. Now I think this is okay. At this point, I'll just um, leave it and then I'll press OK. And here we have it. Now I've reduced the warmth in the picture. This looks way better than before. So yeah, um, this is the first thing I normally do. I, I try to play around to make the image look very natural before I begin to retouch. Now the next thing to do after color correcting your image should be cropping. Now um, you don't want to show every part of your image to your audience and, and also um, depending on the platform you're going to post your image to. For example if you're posting your image to Instagram they have specific frames that they allow uh, to be posted on their, on their platform so you would have to crop your image according to those frames and also crop your images such that uh, you don't show every part of your image to your audience. So to crop your image, just go to your cropping tool. Then um, you've got options to pick from. You've got the one by one, you've got the four by five, and you've got other ones you can pick from. So for example, if you're posting on Instagram and you want the portrait mode, you could choose the four by five or you could choose the one by one. Mostly I use four by five because I just um, prefer 4x5 because I'm a portrait ph photographer and uh, yeah it best use the kind of images I use so I normally use 4x5 so if I select 4x5 then I'll just reposition my image just like this now I feel like this this looks okay for me so I just press enter on my keyboard and voila so this is how I'll leave this image for example now if you look at this the um, let me just go back. If you look at this now, this um, this ladder is not shown after I crop my image, cause I, it doesn't really uh, make it doesn't really have any effect on my image. So I'll just crop it up, just like this. So yeah, um, always remember to crop your images before you begin to retouch. The third thing you should do while editing your photos should be changing your image from 8 bits to 16 bits now why would you want to change your image from 8 bits to 16 bits now it's just one word flexibility um, when you're editing an image in Photoshop if you continue making edits you're going to run into problems now the most common problem which mostly you run into will be banding where uh, you've lost so much detail in the image that Photoshop can no longer display smooth transitions from one color to the next. Instead, you get an ugly stair-stepping effect between colors and tonal values where you would see um, circles, some things like circles on your image. So to prevent that, it's better you always change your image from 8 bits to 16 bits. It's a bit complicated, so if you really want to know much about it, just um, you could search on the internet to find out what um, banding is and how 8 bits and 16 bits help to resolve that. So yeah, always try as much as possible to change your image from 
8 bits to 16 bits. The fourth and final thing you should always try to do is blemish removal. Now, um, try to remove as many blemishes as you can. Not necessarily everything, but those that you possibly can. Uh, remove these blemishes before you run your frequency separation. So, for example, I'll just zoom in this image. There are so many ways of removing blemishes. You can use the, the healing brush tool. You can use the patch tool and you can use the clone stamp tool. So yeah, um, do these things. First of all, do your color correction. And in color correction, it will depend on the type of image you're working on. Then after that, um, you crop your image. Then the next thing to do is change from 8 bits to 16 bits. And then finally, remove as many blemishes as you can before you start to run your frequency separation. So yeah, um, that's it for today's video. Um, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, kindly hit the subscribe button and uh, turn on the notification. See you in my next video. Goodbye.